All right, so lots to unpack. Let's get the Alberta perspective now. The province's finance minister, Nate Horner, is joining us here on Power Play. Mr. Horner, good to see you. Thanks for taking time. No problem. Thanks for having me. I know you had a meeting with Christia Freeland earlier today. Anything new from that? Any breakthroughs from your perspective? Yeah, there was there was definitely some good that came out of it. Uh, appreciated that the feds have, have finally agreed to uh, work with the chief actuary to get the opinion of the chief actuary on what the asset withdrawal would be under the formula, which uh, they also admitted to is theirs. Uh, so that that was helpful. Uh, there was also some frustration in the meeting. Uh, a lot of the other ministers uh, really wanted to talk about the carbon tax and what's happened with it in the last week. And uh, that definitely wasn't allowed in this meeting. So I think uh, we'll be pushing for another. Freeland has said that leaving the CPP would be a terrible mistake. You heard our interview there with Randy Boissonneau, the employment minister, moments ago. He agrees, saying he's hearing Mr. Horner from constituents in Alberta who are worried about your plan. He said, you know, hands off our pensions is trending. Can I get your response to that? Well, I'd say all we've ever sought is, is clarity. This came to us as a recommendation from the Fair Deal panel. We hired uh, Prime Minister Trudeau's old finance minister's firm, Morneau Chappelle, to look into this for us, do a deep dive, find out what our asset withdrawal number would be under the CPP formula. The CPP formula, which has been there uh, since inception and modified twice, once in 1997 when they changed the plan from a pay-as-you-go to a modified pay-as-you-go, and then it was changed again by this Liberal government in 2017 when they added the additional benefits. That's all we've done, and we've thrown it out there in the public to have a conversation about, is this something Alberta should pursue? And we've used the best information that we have, which is this report, which we've had validated by actuaries uh, and legal firms. The minister uh, was given that figure that your government has talked about, Mr. Horner, $334 billion owed to Alberta out of the CPP out of a total of approximately $525 billion, and he called it bonkers. Uh, your thoughts on that? A term. Well, I would say this. This is what happens when you only have three net contributors to the Canadian Pension Plan. The asset withdrawal formula is a pretty basic formula. There's obviously some complex interpretation to it, but in its, in its most basic form, it's net contributions uh, minus your share of the operating expenses, minus benefits paid, plus uh, accrued investment income on the net. That's why, that's why the number is so high for Alberta. It's because higher wages, more participation in the workforce, and obviously younger population. But it means we've been the net contributor. It's been the money of Albertans that's been sitting there accruing this investment income. That's why it has nothing to do with per capita or any of the other bonkers things he said. And I would also like to say this. I heard him say to take my job seriously and take policy seriously. So... Considering he just said that, I, I, an idea just came to me. Hmm. I'm going to work diligently and quickly to come up with a subsidy for Albertans to convert from natural gas to home heating oil. If that's the last carve out on the federal carbon tax, I want to make sure that Alberta citizens can enjoy it. We'll, uh, we'll, follow, we'll follow the Liberals' uh, suit and take and job seriously. Other provinces like Ontario, Mr. Horner, are worried about a possible Alberta exit from the CPP. What would you say to premiers like Doug Ford? I, I would I would say, listen, I I hear I hear you. I enjoyed that in the meeting. Heard a lot about oh, we value Alberta. We we really want Alberta to be to be part of the con contributing forces of this country. And I think that's that's great. And I was clear, too, that Alberta wants to ensure that whether they chose to do this or stay, that the CPP is sustainable. And that's what the Morneau Ch Chappelle report showed us. Even if Alberta did withdraw at that asset formula, the, at that asset withdrawal number, that the CPP would revert back to a sustainability ratio that it held in 2013, when no one was clamoring that the CPP was in rough shape that I'm aware of. I was looking at the website, albertapensionplan.ca, just to get some of the contours. We've obviously been covering this extensively at CTV. What sort of timeline, Mr. Horner, are we talking about here? I know there would be consultations, a possible referendum prior to an exit. You know, people are saying years and years. Can you give us a ballpark? Well, I think the, the most important thing right now is that we're just having a conversation mm -hmm. about this. 
you know, all I've ever said is we're, you know, pursuing clarity on this idea. I was man, I, this was in my mandate letter, release the report, have a conversation with Albertans. Uh, that's what I've done to this point. Um, I am, I am pleased that the feds have agreed to involve the chief actuary and look forward to their opinion on the matter. And that may change the conversation that we have with Albertans. We'll, we'll see. Some have said this is just politics being played out here, and I want to give you an opportunity to respond to that. Uh, the idea that this threat isn't real, it's a way for Alberta to get more concessions from the federal government. True or false? I would say I've been, I've been tasked with dealing with this idea in isolation. I would say this, this was the top recommendation out of the Fair Deal panel. Uh, that's why we commissioned the report. That's why we've pursued this. I would say it is a great uh, example of Alberta's, uh, you know, contributions uh, to Confederation. And I think it's it's been a very interesting conversation so far. And I'm glad the federal government's taken the next step in involving the, the chief actuary. Is there a possible compromise here in which Alberta stays within the Canada Pension Plan? What might that look like, if so? Well, look, we're, we're nowhere near... Um, nowhere near doing otherwise. Mm. We're in the middle of an engagement with Albertans. This is the first step the feds have really taken uh, in acknowledging that they have a role to play here, that it's their that it's their legislation and they need to involve the actuaries. So I would say that's that's where we're at and and no further. It's a it's a conversation. It it would be a very it would be a very long term process. It would be you know, and that's something that I know the, the Saskatchewan minister mentioned today. She's like, this would take this, this could take a decade. Why are we even talking about this when the real affordability challenge that's across the country is the unfairness of the carbon tax coming into winter? Nate Horner is the Finance Minister of Alberta. Thanks so much for taking time for Power Play. Really great to have your perspective tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you.